accuracy can cause, cause use up memory. It can define which type of a piece of equipment you need, how accurate the temperature or pressure, those types of things. Sample interval for all log points and start, stop, date, time specifications. Very important to understand that prior to uh, deployment because if you uh, take the sampling rate too, too much, sometimes it'll load up the data logger memory. So you want to make sure you have enough memory in your data logger for the time period that you're trying to, uh, to sample. And where are we going to locate the data logger sensors? Where, what points are we going to put it and how are we going to uh, mount them and take care of them? Data logger deployment considerations. Well, first we've got to decide what we want to monitor and where. And then you need to choose a logger capable of the accuracy you need. There's many variety, there's a large variety of loggers out there, and actually choosing the right one for the job is pretty important. And getting to understand what those loggers can do uh, for you, it's, it's just important to really know what you need so you've got enough, uh, uh, let's call it horsepower to get the job done. Um, you need to configure the logger by designating start times and the frequency of data collection. Secure the logger in such a manner it will be safe and out of the way as it collects data. Um, we had an incident where a logger got run over by a uh, tow motor. That was not a safe deployment. <laughs> um, download the data in the field or in the office. Uh, downloading the data is, you may, basically you're making a decision. Do you want to download it in the field or do you want to download it in the office? Um, some of these loggers come with shuttles that allow you to easily take the information from one uh, place to another so you don't need, necessarily need to take a computer to the field. And then uh, analyze and save the data. Be pretty bad if you went and you took all this data and then you didn't save it or uh, it and it happens, sometimes mistakes happen, but uh, it's very important to make sure that the data is safe. Some other considerations. Um, some of the things I do highly recommend is you do a trial run. Um, prior to leaving the logger at a location, run it. Make sure it's doing its job. Set it up for a five minute uh, cycle or, or even, even longer if you want, but make sure you run it to make sure all the sensors are coming in and everything is functioning properly. Uh, it's an extra step, but it can save you a lot of pain and suffering if you come back and you don't have the information prop in the logger configured properly. Um, po position your loggers and sensors in an area where no one can interfere with them and in the environments the loggers are suited for. Very important. Uh, people, especially when they see these loggers, they like to you know, check them out, see what's going on with them. You want to get them out of their way so they don't touch them. Um, any sensor wires should be secured using screws, clamps, ties, tape. Uh, get it out of the way. Hide it as best as you can. Make sure you don't have doors shutting on the wires that can short them out because uh, sometimes the loggers have to be outside of a piece of equipment and you're running the wires through a door. They, when that door closes, it could cut the wires, something to be careful of. Record the location of each logger and any other pertinent information. Um, one of the things, if you do a lot of logging and you have a lot of equipment, sometimes it gets lost and forgotten, and you want to make sure you have a record of where that logging equipment is. Um, offload the data prior to removing the logger or sensors to make sure no logging interruptions occurred during the deployment period. Um, yeah, that's important because if you, if you don't do that, uh, sometimes you can lose the data, and, and it's... it's uh, it's tough when you spend all that time and effort and then the data gets lost. You want to make sure that uh, you, you, you take extra care to, that that doesn't happen. And then you back up the collected data once it's offloaded onto the computer. Some basic things, but uh, I can tell you from experience that um, if you don't back it up, eventually one day you will lose it and it's uh, pretty valuable information. Data logger selection criteria. Well, if you're going to get some loggers, you definitely want a logger that can be easily uh, launched, um, configured. Many of the loggers out there today, they're, they're difficult and they're not real friendly. So there's a lot of work to set up a logger. Um, 
we look for loggers that are easy to use, easy to configure, um, things that I don't need necessarily need to send an engineer out to do, but I can have my electrician do as well. Um, we like the plug and play components, um, such as smart sensors that you can plug into a system that we don't have to necessarily configure. They know what they are, and it downloads directly into the logger, and you're off and running. Um, intuitive, easy-to-use software. Boy, it's, that's a big uh, plus. When you have software that understands what the logger and the sensor is and is able to do the uh, engineering conversions for you. Sometimes those engineer, engineering conversions can really be a, a problem factor. Mistakes are made not doing the proper uh, conversion. Um, a variety of data retrieval points, uh, retrieval options is important as well. It's nice to know that you don't necessarily need to have to have a PC or a laptop with you. You can use a shuttle device or you can use some Ethernet based or wireless solutions to help get the data from uh, the logger back to your office so you can do the analysis. And you want to look for a manufacturer that offers some comprehensive customer support. Customer support with loggers is extremely important uh, because you will need to talk to the, those folks to understand how the logger is operating and how to properly set up the sensors with the logger. In conclusion, let's face it, energy demand charges are being raised across the country to commercial and industrial power consumers. You need to have a plan and a, a means to reduce these additional energy costs that are coming. One of the ways is to use low-cost portable data loggers to identify equipment that is causing these charges in your facility. There are three steps to reducing energy demand charges using data loggers. You can measure, then modify the equipment, and then verify that the modifications have taken effect. AHUs that we discussed earlier are one of the largest energy consumers in a commercial building, and they can affect your building's overall energy efficiency, as well as chillers and boilers and other large pieces of equipment. It's important to develop a data logging plan that outlines specific goals, and when you do that, it'll help you manage your pro monitoring projects. Thank you, Bruce. That concludes our webinar, Reducing Energy Demand Charges, Three Critical Steps. For additional information, you can contact Bruce Schaefer at Action Energy at 508-837-6549 or via email bruce at actionenergyusa.com. Or please visit www.actionenergyusa.com. Or if you would like additional information about data loggers, please contact one of Onset's application specialists. You can email them at sales at onsetcomp.com or 1-800-LOGGERS. Or please visit Onset's website at www.onsetcomp.com.